the Israeli passport is good. Globally, it's the 22nd most powerful passport, making it one of the best travel documents in the world, and the second best passport in the Middle East. The passport provides visa-free access to 164 countries, such as the United Kingdom, Russia, Japan, and the entire European Union. But as good as the Israeli passport is, its holders cannot go to the United States without a visa. American citizens, however, can visit Israel without a visa and stay as long as three months. Such an imbalance in bilateral visa policies is not unheard of. For example, American passport holders can go to Thailand quite easily without a visa, but the United States doesn't extend the same courtesy to citizens of Thailand. Check out my review of the Thai passport, by the way. Link up top. That being said, Israel is not Thailand. Its economy is not relying on a bunch of Farans spending money in go-go bars. Don't ask me how I know. Instead, Israel has always had great diplomatic and strategic relations with the United States. One could even say that Israel is the only true U.S. ally in the Middle East. So, what's stopping America from granting Israel visa-free access? Before we start looking into it, allow me to invite you to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any more videos relating to passports, visas, immigration, and international relations. For a passport to gain visa-free access to the United States, it can either do it through the Legacy Program or the Visa Waiver Program. The Legacy Program is not really a systematic program; it's simply a bunch of old immigration laws inherited from centuries ago to accommodate visa-free travel for certain foreign nationals, such as Canadians and Bermudians. It's not likely that any more countries can be added to the list nowadays. That leaves the visa waiver program as Israel's only option. For a passport to join the U.S. visa waiver program, it has to satisfy three requirements: reciprocity. The other country must allow American passport holders to travel without a visa as well. Low refusal rate. In the past year, no more than three percent of the other country's U.S. visa applicants have been rejected. And the other country has to fulfill some specific requirements set out by the State Department. Since Israel already allows U.S. citizens to come over visa-free, the first requirement is easily satisfied.、Uh, I mean, it's satisfied, right? Well, it's not that simple. Israel is allowing American citizens to come in, but not everyone. A while ago, I made a video about the design and symbolism of the Israeli passport. Link in the top right corner for you to check out. In that video, I talked about Israel's strict border security by not allowing many ethnic Arabs from Islamic countries to get in. The same treatment, it seems, is now applied to Americans of Middle Eastern origins. APAC, the famous pro-Israel lobbying group, has even lobbied for an exemption from the reciprocity rule, presumably because they would like Israel to maintain the ability to cherry-pick American citizens they like. As a result of such sentiment, many American travelers who are not white or Jewish has long complained about racial profiling at the Israeli borders. How serious a problem is it? Well, if you are a Palestinian American living in the West Bank and you want to travel internationally, your best bet will be to take the long route of going to Jordan and board a plane there instead of taking the short way of flying out from Israel because it's simply not possible, not even with your American passport. You'll think that if anyone would understand the problem posed by racism, it should be the Israelis, right? But I digress. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, who served in the same position at the State Department back in 2014, noted that the Department of Homeland Security and State remain concerned with the unequal treatment that Palestinian Americans and other Americans of Middle Eastern origins experience at Israel's border and checkpoints. And reciprocity is the most basic condition of the visa waiver program. All right, so Israel is struggling a little bit on reciprocity, but how about the American visa refusal rate? Surely most visa applications filed by Israelis are successful because Israel is a wealthy country and its citizens pose very little risk, right? Well, in order to satisfy the State Department's visa refusal rate requirement, Israel will need to have three percent or lower in the non-immigrant B visa refusal rate, and. 
As you can see, Israeli citizens' non-immigrant B visa refusal rate in 2020 was 6.52%, and it has been doing worse and worse each year. For reference, this number is close to Papua New Guinea's 6.64% and Seychelles 6.38%. Both are extremely underdeveloped countries. Israel's explanation is that young Israelis who just finished their compulsory military duty make up a disproportionately high number of rejections due to their lack of steady employment and income. Whether this is true or not, Israel has a long way to go. And finally, the third requirement, which is usually some arbitrary demands tailor-made to each country. In Israel's case, Washington wants access to its citizens' fingerprint data, which is not an outrageous demand, because when applying for a US visa, you need to submit your fingerprints unless you hold a passport from a visa-exempt country. The reason being, your country's government is already sharing your fingerprints to the US authorities. In other words, every country in the visa waiver program agreed to share their citizens' information with the United States. But currently, Israel's domestic law is preventing such actions. Putting all that together, it's hard to see Israel becoming a member of the visa waiver program anytime soon, barring some extraordinary circumstances. Despite the Trump administration's unprecedented cooperation with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, putting Israel into the visa waiver program was still a step too far and didn't happen during his term. On the 27th of August 2021, the visa issue came up again during the meeting between new Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett and American President Joe Biden. It's apparent that both countries' leaders are aware of the obstacles and are working on resolving it. When do you think Israeli citizens will get visa-free access to the United States? Do you think American government's concerns make sense? Which passport should I talk about next? Comment below and let me know. I'll see you in the next video.